Okay, Math 31, we're going to take a look at transformations of graphs where we shift horizontally and vertically. And we're going to start with the vertical shifts. So given a function f of x, a new function g of x, which is equal to f of x plus a k, where k is a constant, is a vertical shift of the function f of x. So when you're adding a constant outside the function, outside the grouping symbols, you're going to shift vertically. All of the output values change by k units. If k is positive, the graph will shift up. If k is negative, the graph will shift, shift down. So let's take a look at a few examples. We're going to look at two of our toolkit functions, right? The square function, the parabola, and the square root function. And we're going to shift these graphs vertically. So let me move this up so we have our graphs in view. All right. So I want to graph my toolkit functions. I'm going to graph, I'm going to actually do both toolkits right now, and then we'll talk about how they're going to shift. So let me get my x squared function on this coordinate system and my square root function on this coordinate system. So give me a moment. I'm going to label and scale my axes. All right. So I have 0, 0, 1, 1, and then negative 1, 1. I have 2, 4, and then negative 2, 4. And then I have 3, 9, and negative 3, 9. All right, those are your basic, that's a good seven points to draw your parabola, your quadratic function. For the square root of x here, we've got 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and then 9, 3. All right, so with that, let's think about what happens with x squared plus two. And I want you to take note that this plus two is outside of grouping symbols. It's not inside the, the, the quantity that's getting squared. This is still just x squared, and then we're gonna add two. So let's go to our calculator. I'm gonna clear out that giant spider I just drew in. Give me a moment. All right, let's draw in our toolkit function of x squared. All right, there's our parabola. And then the next thing we're being asked to graph is x squared plus two. So let me hit zoom six. There's my original parabola. And then you're seeing x squared plus two. And let me go to my table so we can demonstrate, ooh, that is happening. Oh yeah, I started my, my table last time at negative 10. Let me get some smaller numbers. Let's go and get negative three in view. So when we were graphing x squared, negative 3 squared is 9. But you'll see, if I want to do x squared plus 2, I get to 11, right? I'm just 2 higher. Negative 2 went to 4. If I add 2 to it, I get 6, right? 1 plus 2 is 3. You can see all of the y values here. Well, they just have 2 added to each of them over here. So instead of my vertex being at 0, 0, it's now 0, 2. So let's go ahead and draw in these ordered pairs. So now I'm starting at 0, 2. All right, and if I look at my graph, it looks like I need to go up 2. So I'm going to just count. I was at 1 here. I'm going to go up to 2, or up 2 to 3. I'm going to go up 2 to 3. And then I'm going to climb 2 here and climb 2 here. And then it's a little hard to see. So I'm just going to draw this in like so. Something like that. Ooh, and it's, it gets a little cramped when you're drawing these. So this was f and this was g. Okay, now I want you to see that I have a minus seven. So try and get ahead of me. Where do you think this original parabola is about to shift? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna do x squared minus seven. All right, so when I go to graph it, you can see I have this parabola, right? Now you can see the vertex has been dropped down seven units because I have a vertex at zero, negative seven. If I go to my table, right, you can see at, oops, there it is, at zero, my vertex is at negative seven, right? At negative one, negative six, one, negative six. So I, everything gets dropped by seven units. So I can literally count from each of these points and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's gonna be a point. Here I go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, and then I have some symmetry. Here I'm gonna go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then again, I have some symmetry. 
everything gets shifted seven units down. So even here, even though this was three nine, I'm gonna go down seven units and be at two, and then I'm gonna have some symmetry on this side. All right, there we go, something like that. And something like that, all right? That one was h of x. And they all get a little crammed in there. The parabolas can be like that. But what I have on my paper does match what I have on my graphing calculator. Okay, so with that, let's start to see if we can just kind of make our way through part B without using our calculator initially, and then we'll check it with our calculator. So I graphed my toolkit function, and now it's saying do square root of x plus one. So when I see that plus one, because it's positive, everything's gonna be shifted up one unit. So I'm gonna take this graph and I'm gonna shift everything up one unit. So I'm gonna go zero, one. Instead of one, one, I'm gonna go one, two. Instead of four, two, I'm gonna go four, three. And instead of nine, three, I'm gonna go nine, four. So there is g of x, keeping in mind that was f. Here I see a square root of x minus four. Again, the minus four, it's outside the grouping symbol, or in this case, outside of the square root. So I'm gonna move everything down four units. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. Right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. And here is h of x, or at least those are my guesses at h of x. I'm gonna check it on my calculator now. So let me go to my handy dandy calculator, clear out everything I had before. Let's put in our toolkit function. Let's put in our square root of x plus one, and then the square root of x minus four. Oops, forgot a parentheses, excuse me. And I'm gonna hit graph. All right, there's f of x, great. There's f of x plus one, great. And there is f of x minus four. And if I wanted to, again, you can go to your table and check out all of those y values. Right? And that's what I, I should be getting. Square root of zero is zero. If I add one to it, I'm up at one. Square root of four is two. If I add one to it, I'm up at three. Right? And if I wanted to look at y3, I would just scroll over to the right a little bit more. Okay, so I put all of those graph screens, those screenshots, Oops, let me scooch that up just a bit. I put all of those screenshots on your paper as well, just so you'd know what they looked like. All right, so with that, we're gonna do horizontal shifts next. So these, these numbers that we've been looking at, all right, the ones coming out of example five. Let me go right back to the top here. All right, everything coming out of example five, I want you to see we were adding a constant, all right, and that would move us up and down, okay? And now what we're gonna do, I should say, we're adding a constant outside the function symbol, outside the grouping symbol, that moved us up and down. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an, a constant inside this grouping symbol, and that's gonna move us left and right. All right, guys, I'll see you in a few, bye.